Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Amin. Um, today I'm going to be talking about what brought me uh, closer to uh, accepting uh, Islam and all the factors that made me feel that Islam was completely right for me and everything that I basically learned. Before you listen to the details, please like and subscribe and support a brother. Jazakallah. Coming into Islam, um, I was brought up on the Bible, read the Bible almost every single day, actually front to back many times. And so I never actually picked up the Quran um, before I became a Muslim uh, or before I decided I wanted to become Muslim. So what happened was I just picked up the Quran and started reading. Uh, and that's what gave me that, that spark, that feeling, and that made me want to investigate more about the Quran. So me reading the Quran uh, every day and learning more from it was a completely different experience in reading the Bible. Um, of course, the Bible itself has amazing morals and stories and uh, stuff that can motivate you to do better and get closer to God as well. But um, the Quran had so much uh, detail and factual things that I learned later on that was so connected to the universe itself in a, in a different way. Um, but the Quran was like, you know, like poetry. To me, when I read it, it was like connection. You know, when I even the English translation, I was like there. Once I heard the Arabic um, recitation, my heart felt something that you can't even imagine. It was like, what is that feeling I'm feeling where I just feel like I want to cry? And to be completely honest with you, I'm not the guy that always cries when I uh, feel emotional about something. Like, I would just hold it in. But the Quran was something that basically did not allow me to hold it in. And the Quran holds so much things that, like information and, and and stuff that I never actually would believe would uh, be connected to the world like the sea like the human body uh, such as the embryo and you know how we are created uh, the sky the rain and you know if you don't know I suggest you to click like on YouTube and look at different things that are connected to the Quran and that will give you a better uh, a better note but that was that was like the main thing that really triggered me was how deep the Quran was in its own uh, in its own way, and that uh, when I found that the Quran could be memorized with anybody, I was like, wow! And there's like history of people trying to destroy it, but it just being rewritten all over again, just to be like to protect and, and and make sure that word is like, you know, not changed. And you put one one person in a room, another person in a room, and they rewrite the Quran exactly the same as they memorize it, because that's the the gift that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us. The second uh, reason uh, I felt like the like Islam brought me like super close was the connection between Christianity and Islam. How I personally in Christianity have been believing in Father Abraham, you know, before time, Adam, Eve, it's like all relatable. There are slight differences um, and so forth. But in the beginning, it's like literally like exactly the same all up into like the oneness of God. And it's like, that's where I got stumped on, like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Some text says Jesus talking to the God. I'm like, so is he God? Like, is he talking to God? Like, like what's going on? I'm so confused. And then I would just ask, you know, a lot of uh, my Christian friends, and they would go to the pastors, and they would say, you know, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's, it's a miracle, to, it's, it's a mystery. Like, you know, you believe in it, that God is one. I'm like, three doesn't equal one. Doesn't make any sense. And this is where I got into learning about, um, the Bible from, uh, you know, peace be upon him, uh, since he's passed away, uh, Ahmed Didat, and, uh, you know, I learned a lot about, like, you know, studied his debates, and I was like, wow, it's super in-depth, and if you don't know who Ahmed Didat is, also look him up, he's phenomenal, but, um, yeah, it was just like the connection between me not having to switch my belief completely, oh, like, you know, believe in this idol, no, it's not like that, it's like, literally like, okay, so the only thing you got wrong uh, I mean was that Jesus is not a God he's a prophet read the Bible it talks about the mission it talks about this talks about that I'm like this is the missing puzzle so the whole time all I've been doing is worshiping one God and the confusion of oh Jesus is the Father Son Holy Spirit was the main thing that confused me and you know when I look back in the Quran I look at the in the Bible and all the prophets all the prophets were telling you they came down for the mission, the one mission, to worship one God. Worship one God. 
worship, and nations were destroyed because of not worshiping one God or following the you know the laws of God. And that's like one God, one God, and that was just like amazing transition from Christianity, not understanding certain things straight into Islam, which gave me the complete like understanding, you know. And then after I got into learning how to pray five times got me just super close to the one creator of the universe the creator of the universe and what a lot of people don't know is that even for me when I was not a Muslim was Allah is not like an idol it's not a statue it's not a piece of necklace it's it, in Arabic is so amazing that they say Allah because Allah you can't put an S God God you can put an S and make God but Allah means Allah you cannot connect anything with it in that term so Allah means one no connections whatsoever so that's another amazing part is that I was like, yo, I believe in one God, the creator of the universe. I don't think anything, you know, God doesn't have no beginning. God doesn't have no end. That's why I've always believed in. So that transition was perfect. And then me praying five times a day and me giving uh, charity and me asking God, in a diff, you know, directly. Um, and because I had experience with Catholicism too as well, you'd have to go to a father and ask for forgiveness or go to a booth. And I just felt like, yo, honestly, I'm not about that. I just know the connection between God is from me and God. And on the day of judgment, when I stand in front of God, I won't be having anyone in between us to sort out our issues. God is the best. He is eternal. He is the all-knowing. So that's all I needed to solidify everything in my heart. As I transitioned into being a Muslim, uh, the most amazing part was um, how it brought my family together and taught me so much morals islam teaches you about manners and teaches you about being clean it teaches you about you know to control your tongue to like you know to just be respectful and the most amazing thing was because i lost my mother in a world like uh, like lost her in like um in a way where she was not on the right path in life in general but you know after praying so much for her god brought her back to the path and she became a christian and once she accepted Christianity, I was able to sit down with her and ask her questions that I had for her and maybe I could get answers from. But she never got the answers which convinced her to become um, a Christian, a Muslim as well. So when I knew Islam said mother, 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 I was like, I loved my mother from the day I came out of her womb. You know, the day I was so like, you know, grateful for uh, my mother giving birth to me. And to know that Islam taught me about being respectful to your parents, being respectful to your siblings, being respectful to, you know, as you walk on the street, you are an example to the people that are watching you. And, you know, you don't do it for the people. You do it because you're a good character and people will wonder why you're so happy. Why are you so, uh, you know, good to your family? And then it's like Islam is what teaches you how to be that person. And when my brothers accepted Islam and my sister accepted Islam and my mother accepted Islam, even though we went through a whole crisis in our family where I went in foster care and we all got separated, it brought us right back together as if, you know, like the, the connection was like 10 times better than it ever was. And I don't think like anyone can understand the magnitude of what God truly did for like my family because we were completely broken and thank god like you know my father he was a buddhist as well and i kind of asked him about buddhism and he had a misconception about believing in buddha as a god and he at one point didn't believe in god at all because he thought that it was a scam and giving money like first time he ever came to canada he went to a church and they asked him to give charity if you want this and he gave all the money in his pocket and you know, I know in Christianity that you don't need to do that, but th that church was very forceful on asking him to give money, and he didn't have anything to eat that day. So at that time, he stopped believing in God completely. But I was telling him that, you know, God is not a human being. Even Buddha himself was looking for enlightenment, and the enlightenment was finding the oneness of God. And my father was like, hmm, so don't worship Buddha. Worship God. You believe in God. You believe God exists. He's like, yes. I'm like, that's all that matters and that brought me closer to my father you know and like I was mentioned my family became so strong to the point where like now giving was like so easy to do even though we grew up in poverty where if we had something we'd hide it because we're hungry you know we don't want to give it 
because if we give it, you're not having it for yourself. But Islam taught me to give the shirt off my back, money, whatever they need, send it. Even if you barely have like enough, I still did that for my family. So bringing the connection of my family together, Islam had an amazing and huge impact on that. And that's something that no one can ever understand until they actually learn about you know, the morals of Islam and about how the Prophet وسلم, Muhammad peace be upon him like showed kindness to people. Once I was about um, a month in of being a Muslim, I made a lot of du'as which are called prayers uh, and asking for God for things um, because I learned how to pray my five daily prayers and then was taught to make a prayer after to ask God to give you basically whatever you want. And there's times where I would make du'a and it would just come out of nowhere. And I'll give you an example. It was about maybe 11.30 at nighttime and all the prayers were finished. And at that point at the mosque, you know, my, my foster parents didn't give a crap if I even came home at that point because of the struggle I went through when I became Muslim. Um, but we had to be home before 12 o'clock. If we weren't home before 12 o'clock, she would ban me from going to the mosque for a whole week. So it was me, my brother Abdullah, a.k.a. James, Yusuf, a.k.a. Joseph, and Jay, a.k.a. Ali, sitting on the steps of the masjid. And I remember, I told Abdullah, you know, we're not going to find a ride. He's like, I mean, make dua. I'm like, but like, and I'm panicking because I don't want to lose out. I'm not going to the masjid. So I put my hands together and I said, Allah, from the bottom of my heart, please find us a way to go home. And by Allah, I'm telling you, the parking lot was completely empty. After I made the dua, three minutes after, a brother pulled in. He pulls in. He's like, Salaam alaikum. I'm like, what is that? What are your brothers saying? I'm like, nothing. He's like, you guys need a ride home? SubhanAllah. We made it home exactly for 12 o'clock. And then there was no complications. Another, there's, I, honestly, there's so much du'as. I mean, I can go on for days. And, you know, even though the devil tells you in your head that, it's probably just a coincidence. Probably just a coincidence. It was not a coincidence. Things that I've asked for are just like, it's a miracle in itself. And that's what brought me even closer, which is to keep asking Allah for things that I need, you know, in this life to survive. And I know that right I needed to get home. But what I want, I knew was just a desire. I may not need it. So Allah gave me the things that I truly needed, you know, and that's what truly made me keep striving and learning more about Islam and trusting more of my du'as instead of just saying, oh, like, oh, like do find her, Allah, give me that, that, you know, no, I, maybe just stick there and be like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I really need your help. Like, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer my du'a for my mother to uh, accept Islam, my sisters to accept Islam, my brothers to accept Islam, some of my friends to accept Islam, like these things is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has basically shown me that the power of du'a and I'm telling you like du'a was just like it was a gift in my life and even till this day I don't doubt my du'as if I make du'a for something I wait if it doesn't come I keep making du'a and if it's not right then it's not right but everything that I ever needed in my life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered and the last and final thing um, that Islam has given me was self-happiness I mean like when you're living a life asking people questions about certain things they don't understand Islam gives you answers to almost everything how to stay clean like I mentioned before how to treat your parents how to live in a certain way that makes you one respectful two you know clean from the inside and out and in general happy and in this world everybody looks for happiness um, you know that's why you know when people go out and they're doing um, you know crazy things in life um, like I'll be honest with you I strayed away from the past from the path at one point and I'll make a video about that too as well for the brothers out there that you know feel like there's no hope but when you're out there and you're doing crazy things you're partying you're you know clubbing and thinking you're having a good time when the lights are done you're actually alone and you're alone alone all by yourself and nobody else 
can feel what you're feeling because they continue to to wash themselves in that type of lifestyle till they feel like they have to find a distraction to get their brain from reality like and that's the sad part is like Islam is like it's not that thing that you have to keep on doing to make you feel it's just like a way of life that you know already it's right you don't feel guilty in doing it you don't feel alone and you know that Allah is always there with you no matter what you know you might have a friend that may leave you never come back family that may pass you know like but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there with you no matter what you do so me becoming a Muslim was like the most uplifting thing that's ever happened to me and to be honest with you um, I can't really explain how I felt in depth until you actually feel exactly what I felt or if you're a Muslim and you feel like you know what like you're lost and shaitan always tells you every single day like oh don't don't do this don't pray that I was in that path you know you have to take one step at a time and if there was any advice that I'd give my Muslim brothers or Muslim sisters out there that would just be like take one step at a time if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you another day to live that's another chance to make a change and to be completely honest with you you have to take it slow you can't rush you can't like you know jump in and do five daily prayers salah, and then be like I'm gonna be a sheikh and you know and then you start to try to please people and then and you get disappointed and then you just leave the path completely and that's where you you definitely have lost your path because Islam is not a hard religion it's very 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 simple the mission from all the prophets was to believe in one God we believe we pray five times a day to remember the God we do good things out of our heart because that's what Islam teaches you and there's nothing crazy to it you know and you follow the guidelines and you stay positive and you'll see the, you'll see the amazing um, results from that outcome um, and read Quran it purifies your heart when I don't read Quran I know I don't read Quran I tell myself I read Quran I don't read Quran read Quran don't always go out there and listen to people what they have to say because what they could be teaching you may not be exactly what the Quran is telling you you know that's why we have certain shifts that kind of like break it down and stuff but when you read the Quran like I read the Quran when I first accepted this time I felt it here I didn't just take it here and just discard everything else no I took it here I took it here and I registered and felt it until I felt the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not the connection with the sheikh I want to be like like you sheikh and start no astaghfirullah the connection is always between you and Allah so when it feels right when you learn about the solid truth about it then you know already right then and there you know that, that is truly what it means the real truth because in the Quran stated there and the last thing is to ask questions don't hesitate to ask questions and don't live in the ways of what people live in because culture will throw you completely off to the point where you're not even practicing the sound anymore you're just doing what culture people do and then you know your marriage falls apart because someone told your brother you gotta get married now get married now you know that, 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 i have a sister i got her i want to get her done married no you, next you know your marriage falls apart because you never learn the basics of certain things you know so learn take your time and ask questions and honest to god you'll probably see a big change in your life because when you focus on your relationship between you and Allah, everything becomes so clear. You know, so inshallah, hopefully you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And please leave a comment if you have any questions. As a matter of fact, if you want me to make a video about something else, leave a comment, drop a comment. And inshallah, I'll try my best to make a video about it and explain to you how I feel. And, you know, this is this is for everybody. You know, and, and inshallah, you know, this reaches everyone. Zakhla khair. Salaam wa barakatuh. Also, share my video, inshallah.